I'm Dr. Brawley Wong. My pronouns are she, her. I'm a board certified family physician, and I love gender and reproductive health care. Today's video, by special request, is a deep dive into finasteride and dutasteride in feminization affirmation therapy. As you might remember from our testosterone blocker video, see link below, finasteride and dutasteride act by blocking the conversion of testosterone to its most active potent form called DHEA. Finasteride is a pill taken once daily and dosed anywhere from one milligrams to maximum of five milligrams daily. Dutasteride is also a once daily pill, but only comes in one dose, half a milligram. Dutasteride actually might be more efficacious for preventing masculine pattern baldness since it tends to be more active in the hair follicles. For both medications, it'll take at least three months of continuous use to see hair preservation effects. If you stop taking this medication, the hair preservation effects will usually reverse by 12 months of stopping the medication. As for other feminizing effects, finasteride and dutasteride can cause small growth in the chest and breast tissue and can also be associated with decreased libido. These changes usually occur more frequently with higher doses and longer duration of taking the medication. As for monitoring, usually your doctor will check a baseline liver function and then follow up with just annual testing. Since finasteride and dutasteride are processed by the liver, you should let your physician know if you're taking other medications or supplements so that they can be aware of any potential interactions. Additionally, your doctor may want to check a prostate-specific antigen level after you've been on these medications for about six months. This is because both of these medications tend to lower your prostate-specific antigen level, creating a new baseline. As for side effects, similarly to testosterone and estrogen therapy, we do not have enough data to confidently say the long-term effects on fertility. We do know that finasteride and dutasteride decrease sperm counts, but scientists suspect that this would be reversible if you stop the medication. However, not enough data to confirm that at this point. Similarly to spironolactone, finasteride and dutasteride can cause orthostasis or that lightheadedness feeling with standing up too quickly. In regards to prostate cancer risk, scientists are still debating finasteride and dutasteride's effect. In general, prostate cancer is a slow-growing cancer that oftentimes people will pass away from old age prior to actually passing away from their prostate cancer. Finasteride actually in some studies has been shown to decrease overall risk of prostate cancer. However, we don't use finasteride to prevent prostate cancer at this point because also in studies, we noticed that people taking finasteride, if they do get prostate cancer, tend to have higher grade or more severe forms of prostate cancer. This paradox might be explained by the fact that finasteride tends to lower prostate-specific antigen levels and tends to shrink the prostate. This makes our prostate cancer screening tests more sensitive and our prostate biopsies more sensitive for these high-grade cancers. However, we still need more research to determine finasteride's effect on prostate cancer risk. Overall, the incidence of prostate cancer on people taking finasteride is about 2%. Finasteride and dutasteride have also been rarely associated with chest or breast cancer at a less than 1% incidence rate. Since Finasteride and dutasteride's effect on prostate cancer risk is still not fully understood. You should have a risk benefits conversation with your doctor before starting these medications. For example, for some people, the benefits of improved mental health and decreased suicidal ideation will outweigh the risk of potentially developing prostate cancer. Whereas 
if you're someone with a strong family history of cancer or a personal history of cancer, the risks of finasteride might outweigh the benefits of using it in affirmation, in which case you might want to pursue non-medication affirmation or affirmation with a different medication. This is a highly personal and very case-by-case decision that should be made using a shared decision-making model with a physician who knows you well. Thank you so much for today's video suggestion. I hope that it helps give you the information you need to have a meaningful conversation with your healthcare provider. I did include links in the description for some of my resources. If you enjoyed today's content, please like and consider subscribing. See you later. Zola.